So I want you guys to join me in the book of Genesis. The book of Genesis. The 19th chapter. Oh, thank you, Jesus. Genesis 19. I'm going to read a couple of verses. I'm going to read my, a little ways so you guys can don't have to stand today. But what I'm reading is the story that passes just talks about this, this, the destruction of Sodom and Gomorrah. Amen? So, Genesis 19, starting with verse 1. And they came two angels to Sodom at evening. And Lot sat in the gate of Sodom. And Lot, seeing them, rose up to meet them. And he bowed himself with his face toward the ground. And he said, Behold, now my lords, turn in. I pray into you, servant's house, and tarry all night. And wash your feet, and ye shall rise up early and go on your ways. And they said, Nay. But we will abide in the street all night. And he pressed upon, the, he pressed upon them greatly. And they turned into unto him. He turned in unto him, and entered into his house. And he made them a feast, and did bake unleavened bread, and they did eat. But before they lay down, the men of the city, even the men of Sodom, compassed the house round. That means they surrounded the house, both old and young, all the people from every quarter, every man in the town came around their house and they circled the house. And they called unto Lot and said unto them, Where are the men which came in to thee this night? Bring them out unto us that we may know them. And Lot went out at the door unto them and shut the door after them and said, I pray you, brother, do not so wickedly. Behold now, I have two daughters which have not known men. Let me, I pray you, bring them out unto you, and do ye to them as is good in your eyes. Only unto these men do nothing, for therefore came they under the shadow of my roof. And they said, Stand back. And they said again, This one fellow came in to sojourn, and he will needs be a judge. Now we will deal worse with thee than with them. And they pressed sore upon the man even Lot, and came near to break the door. But the men put forth their hand, and pulled Lot into the house to them, and shut the door. And they smote the men that were at the door, and the house were blind with blindness, and small and great, so that they wearied themselves to find the door. Now this is where we want to get to. And the men said unto Lot, Hast thou here, here any besides son-in-law and thy sons and thy daughters and whatsoever thou hast in the city, bring them out of this place. Bring them out of this place. For they will destroy, for we will destroy this place because the cry of them is waxing great before the face of the Lord and the Lord hath sent us to destroy it. And Lot went out and spake unto his sons-in-law which married his daughters and said, up, get you out of this place for the Lord will destroy this place. But he seemed as once that mocked unto his sons-in-law. They thought he was making fun. And when the morning arose, then the angels hastened Lot, saying, Arise, take thy wife and thy two daughters, which are here, lest thou be consumed in the iniquity or the sin of the city. And while he lingered, the men laid hold upon his hand and laid upon hand of his wife and upon the hand of his two daughters and the Lord being merciful unto them. And they brought him forth and set him without the city. The angels took them out of the city forcibly. And it came to pass when they had brought them forth abroad that he said, escape for thy life. Look not behind thee. Look not behind thee. Neither stay thou in all the plain. Escape to the mountains, lest thou be consumed. Jump down to verse 24. Then the Lord rained upon Sodom and Gomorrah, bringing stone and fire from the Lord out of heaven. And he overthrew these cities and all the plain and all the inhabitants of the cities and that which grew upon the ground. Verse 26. But his wife looked back from behind him and she became a pillar of salt. The word of God is blessed. 
I um, want to talk to you today about, um, I had a couple of titles actually, which is why I'm not surprised that my tablet won't turn on. Actually, we need to keep this, since my tablet won't turn on. Um, <laughs> but um, I'm not surprised about, um, I had a couple of topics. One was, you can't get deliverance looking back. And that's what I really want to talk to you about today. And my, and my, my, my plan, or at least what God had told me, is just explain this scripture and this passage. Um, in this passage that we read, I know I read it from the King James, and I typically take it easy on you guys and read a more um, user-friendly version. But um, I read it from the King James, and I want to go back and really explain what Sodom and Gomorrah was like. This, is, this story is significant because... It shows us that there is a time, there, there is a time in the Bible which is similar to the times we live in today. In the city of Sodom and Gomorrah, the reason why God was desiring to destroy the city because there was a lot of evil going on. Right. There was a lot of homosexual behavior and activity going on. I have to, I just have to talk frank, and I, and I don't think that the um, subject is too taboo for the young children because when I listen to their music, they're deep into it. So I don't feel as though this is inappropriate. So if you, if you, if you want to talk to me later on, I, 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 my door is always open to you guys. But um, there was a lot of wickedness going on, so much so that God sent his angels to get a ground's eye view of what was really happening. Lot was at the gate. Lot was Abraham's nephew. So not, Lot knew God. He understood God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, right? So this is, and Lot sees the angel, and immediately, Lot knowing the city that he lives in, the behavior of the people that he's in, he runs and gets the angels. And he says, would you guys come into my house so that we can worship and sup together, right? And the angels initially say, no. But Lot being conscious to the environment, right, to, right. that these angels are, and he, he begs of them. He says, please come. And so they come in, and he prepares food the way the day that's necessary, unleavened bread. But while they're there, the story says that every man in the city, every man, young and old, came to the house, and they wanted those men, the angels that were in Lot's house, so that they could perform of horrible sexual activities with them. You gotta get that. And Lot went out and said, don't do this thing. This is wicked. Lot knew the type of people that he was around. Mm -hmm. He said, and it was so bad that Lot said, take my virgin daughters. Take my virgin daughters, but don't do this. This is unacceptable. I'm building a case because I want you to understand that this was a great level of sin. This was a this was a great um, I, I don't want to I, I don't want to use a word that's too heavy, but it was just, it was bad. It was really really bad. So much so that the men were mad that Lot wouldn't turn them over. So they said, Lot, you think you're better than us? Now we're going to do worse to you than we were going to do to those men. And the angels grabbed Lot, pulled him back inside the door. And they smote the men with blindness. They made every man, let's talk about the power of God. They made every man in the city blind so they couldn't find the handles of the door to try to continue to get in. I, I had to go through that so you, you understand. They were in a bad place. Right. Lot and his family were in a bad place. They were the only quote unquote resemblance of holiness in that whole area. So much so that God said, we're going to destroy the whole city. There's not, throw the whole city away. You know, <laughs> just throw the whole city away. Just, just start over and we're going to get you out of here. And the angel said, Are there, is there anybody here that you're related to that needs to be saved? And Lot was like, I got some son-in-laws. So he went and told the son-in-laws what was going on and they thought he was kidding. So they ignored him. That's important. Right, right, right. So then the angel said, y'all got to go. And even in the midst of them being about to destroy the city, Lot and his wife were lollygagging. They were like, they were hesitant. Mm -hmm. So then the angel physically, the angels physically grabbed Lot, his wife, and his daughters and threw them out the city. Mm -hmm. The angel physically threw them out. You have, you have to get this, yeah. right? And then still after all of that, all that happened, the angels spoke, with, spoke to people with blindness, 
the fire and brimstone coming down on the city, the angels escorting them and throwing them out of the city. Lot's wife still looked back. You can't get delivered looking back. If I had to give you three things to really hone in on from this passage, three points, you have to, um, let me see, what, what, what did I write in my life? I got to visualize. You have to see the sign. You have to believe the sign. And then you have to flee the sign. Okay? You have to see the signs. You have to believe the signs. And you have to flee the signs. See the signs. They were living in a wicked city. It was obvious. Everything, that, that's why Lot ran to the angel. He was like, I don't want you to see you. I don't want you to see you. Is, is that, is, do we be like that sometimes? Mm. Like, what if pastor popped up at your house? <laughs> Would you be like, I don't, want you, I, don't want, I don't want you to see me living like this. Mm. Just be honest. Listen, just be honest. Listen, if y'all came over to my house, there's some things that I wouldn't want y'all to see for different reasons. They were like, uh-huh, Pastor, you're supposed to be healthy. I see that bacon. You know, your dog's always going to be bacon. You see, we see them sweets. We see them sodas. You're supposed to be the, the model of, you know, fitness. Here you are eating everything. You That's not on your Facebook, Instagram, tweet, <laughs> you know, but, but there are some things in our lives because yeah. we're going somewhere because you can't get delivered looking backwards. And deliverance ain't always addiction. Right. Deliverance isn't always, you know, fornication. Some of us need to be delivered from our health habits. Some of us need deliverance from sickness. But you can't get delivered looking backwards. Y'all with me so far? Because yeah. I'm going to make it applicable because everybody ain't, well, I, it's hard to say under the L. But everybody's issue isn't, you know, what the issue was specifically right. in the Bible. But the steps for deliverance are consistent. The first thing you have to do is you have to see the signs. What are the, the signs in the Bible was we're living in a wicked city with men that want to lay with men, which is an abomination of God. That was something that they needed deliverance from. Right. But what are the signs in your life? Are you constantly in abusive relationships? Are you constantly messing up your money? Are you constantly losing your temper and your self-control? What, what are the signs that you need to change something? The first thing you have to do is a self-assessment of your life and see the sign. The Bible tells us to examine ourselves. You have to see the signs. And you examine yourself by this. This is the standard. So what you do is you say, is my life lining up with what God says it's supposed to be? See, when I look at myself and I, I see the signs, I'm like, whew. I still got some unforgiveness up in there. I still see my, my, my stuff is deeper than the surface, so it's hard for people on the outside looking in the really see. It's like getting on my nerves. I can keep a straight face. I can keep a straight face. It's annoying me. But what are this? Okay, these are signs that I have to deal with. And then so I have to do what's necessary so that those signs are no longer present in my life. Have you ever had a cold? Yeah. What are some of the signs and symptoms of a cold? Scratchy throat. Scratchy throat. What else? Runny nose. What else? Sneezing, Sneezing coughing, all of that good stuff. Hiccups. So, not hiccups. Hiccups Chills. is not a, chills <laughs> or or sweating. But um, those are signs and symptoms of a cold. When you get the first inkling of a cold, what do you do? Huh? Is that the first thing you do? That's because you older, Greg. Right? You you like I, I can't afford to get sick. But most of us. If you're, you're roll, your nose starts to run, you don't run and get medicine. You blow your nose and you keep trucking, right? Yeah. First thing you have to do is see the signs, right? And then you have to believe the signs. Right. You have to believe the signs. The first thing you have to do is see the signs. You have to, so, so Lot, when they saw the signs, they had to believe what the angel was telling them. He went and warned his sons, but his sons didn't believe. They thought he was just kidding. Wow. But we have to believe that you can't get deliverance if you don't believe you need deliverance. Mm -hmm. If you think it's okay. Right. So once you see the signs, you better go, you better believe the signs. I don't allow myself, praise God, to get sick anymore. I don't think anyone allows themselves to want to get sick. But when I like I know some of my stuff is seasonal. Like when the seasons change, I know I start to feel a certain type of way. I know my body enough that when, you know, itchy throat or post nasal drip, I'll be like, woman, 
No, I'm sorry. Yeah. Pastor Janelle, I was like, Pastor Janelle, um, <laughs> make me, you know, the third flu with the cough drops and the night quill. I got a whole mix. Mm -hmm. Don't be trying to figure out what I'll be taking to stay healthy. I was like, I need that. I need it. And so before it gets bad, I start to take, I go through my ritual to make sure I stay well. Because right. okay? I need to be well. And like, before I would just be like, oh, that's nothing. Then it would get worse. Yeah. It would escalate. And then it wouldn't just be a runny nose and it wouldn't be. But isn't that just how sin is? When you ignore sin, it escalates and, and you begin to get further and further. You can't get deliverance. If you don't believe the signs, I can't get well from a cold if I never treat the sickness. Right. You have to treat the disease. The disease is not going to go away by itself. The disease is not going to go away without a prescription. The disease is not going to go away without medication. But if you don't believe that you're, and men, we're the worst. I, I raise my head bar. We are the, we are the worst. Maybe when you get older, you go to the doctor. But when you're young, I don't need no doctor. We tough. We hard. We tough it out. Walk outside in the rain. <laughs> no coat on. No hat on. We, 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 you know, right? Uh -huh. We worse. Laugh at the women. You always cold. <laughs> uh, you know, next thing we know, we sniffling and then we got, then our pride and ego get in the way. We got to act like we just can tough it out, feel miserable inside. You got to see the signs and you got to believe the signs. If you don't believe the signs, you're not going to take the, the precautions. So, so what are some signs in your life that you have seen that you've ignored? What are some signs in your life that you have seen that you have ignored? I, can, I, I, I got some examples. So you have a friend, right? And you and your friend have a relationship. Y'all cool. You see your friend lying to someone else, right? What's the first thing you think? I'm going to tell you what I think. I don't care. They're not lying to me. Right. That's, that, that's how I used to think. But that's a sign. Because if that person has the capacity to lie, that person's a liar. That's a sign. So first I have to see it for what it really is. Right. And I can't see you as my friend anymore. I have to see you as a person that I know that is a liar. Y'all with me? Yeah. And if you are a liar, now I have to believe that you are a liar. And I have to treat you as you are a liar. Because you've shown me that. You got people that steal. And then they'll, they'll come back to you because y'all cool. And, oh, you're a thief. Right. Okay, I can't leave you alone around my stuff because you have the capacity to steal. And the tragic part about it is if you think it's all right to share that with me, then you think we're cool with that type of behavior. So the first thing you have to do is see the sign, and then you have to believe the sign. Don't just ignore it because it's not happening to you because right, you wait right. around long enough. You give them a little bit of time. You wait until it's advantageous for them to lie to you or to steal to you or to take advantage of you or manipulate you and they will do it because it's who they are you have to see the sign and believe the sign. you can't get deliverance looking behind you you gotta forget that old relationship because that old relationship once you see a new sign may have been built upon upon false pretenses yeah, yeah. so you have to see the signs and then you have to believe the signs and then you have to flee. You have to flee the signs. If there is something that ain't right, that don't look right, and don't smell right, you need to separate yourself from it. You need to get away from it. How can I get delivered from a cold if I keep rolling around in germs? I was talking to a young... Uh, <laughs> He wish he was here. He would, he would probably, you know, he would probably put money in the basket or something. I don't know. I was talking to an older gentleman yesterday from the Rock Church. And um, it was cold this winter. It was very cold. in the Rock Church down the street, um, they, um, they put up a tent, a heated tent, so that the people who were living on the streets could come inside and get warm. And he was just sharing this. I was like, how did that go? I was like, He's like, oh, actually, it would be good. He's like, I almost died. I was like, what do you mean? He's like, because one of the people in there was sick. And he came into the tent and he started coughing. And then someone else in there started coughing. And then someone else in there started coughing. And before you knew it, everybody, and he was one of the, he wasn't homeless, he was just on duty. He got sick too. And he said, when he went to the, um, 
I forget how it was diagnosed, but when he went to the hospital, the doctor said he had community past of pneumonia. It's, they have a name for something. It's when you're in a group of people and they're all sick, the germs just transfer from one person to another. And the point is, how do you expect to get well if you're surrounded by germs and disease and sickness? You've done nothing to separate yourself. You have not flee the, you have not fled from the very thing that is infecting you, that is impacting you, that is causing you the hurt. You can't get delivered from a, a, a what's the word, a, a toxic relationship by staying in the toxic relationship. You have to flee the situation. You can't get delivered. I, I got to go with what I know. I, I, my stepdad used the worst. Uh, <laughs> my stepdad. You can't get delivered from diabetes and you want to keep drinking Pepsi. It's not going to work. I'm sorry. I know we got a Pepsi issue here. But, 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 but it's the truth. You can't get, you can't get delivered. I mean, we don't have to be so deep. It's like you can't get delivered from drugs if you keep smoking crap. No, there's some simple things. Right, right. Uh, you know, I, I, I can't get delivered from poverty if I refuse to work, mm-hmm. whatever job. Mm-hmm. I can't get, I can't, I can't get delivered. Right. I can't get delivered, so I have to flee the things that are causing me to struggle. Mm-hmm. That's the hard part, isn't it? It's the hard part breaking away from relationships that we've had for a long time. It's, a, it's the hard part is breaking away from things that we're so accustomed to doing that are just comfortable. Just comfortable. It's, it's what we know. Even though we know it's bad for us, it's, we're, we're, more, we're more comfortable with the thing that's bad for us than the thing that we don't know. And the tragedy is the thing that's bad for us is slowly killing us. The angels told Lot, you have to get out of this city or you're going to, the sin, it's like the iniquity. The iniquity of the city will consume you. It will consume you. The sin and the behaviors of those things that have hooks in you eventually will consume you if you do not separate yourself from them. Separate yourself from them. We got a saying here in House of Triumph. We say, who are you flocking with? Who you flocking with? Because birds of a feather flock together. And if we flock in together, the assumption is that we have something in common. I can understand why people don't want to come into this place of worship. Because they're not flocking with us like that. Because <laughs> they know that we're not going to allow for some of their behavior that they think is okay. We have made our position known. We're going to love you. We're going to help you. If there's a need that we can meet, we will try to do that. But behavior is checked at the door. Amen. Behavior is because we can't allow others who don't know to think that's how we flock together. We just don't do that. We separate ourselves from the things that will cost us our deliverance. Now, you can't get delivered if you never see the signs. So you have to evaluate. You can't get delivered if you don't believe the signs. So you have to take the, you have to take the evidence for what it is. You have to take the evidence for what it is. And you can't get delivered unless you separate yourself. You have to do that. And after you do that, you cannot look back. You cannot reminisce. You can't long for the days of old. Most of y'all know I used to smoke a lot of marijuana. I used to smoke a lot of marijuana. And it's funny because now you know the job that I have, I drive an Uber every once in a while, so I'll get in the car and they'll smell like marijuana. And I'm like, ooh, that's strong. <laughs> but guess what I don't do? Yeah. I don't I don't ever say, hey, I like some of that. I no, 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 I'm not looking back. I'm not looking because you know what I realized when I was in that life? There was a whole lot of bondage that came along yes. with that. Yes. I was slowly, listen, I was losing my voice. I couldn't sing the way I sing now. I wish I would have never did it because I probably could sing really good instead of okay. But um, <laughs> instead of okay. But I threw away a lot of money. I tell people all the time, I said, I got a Lexus in my lungs and I got an Escalade in my kidneys because of the lifestyle that I used to live. But, but, but I'm not looking back, right. because guess what? 
I know that it was God that delivered me, and I'm not going to look back and risk being stuck there. Because that's what happened to Lot's wife. Yes. It says she was turned into a pillar of salt. Yes. And I know our, let, 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 me, let, me, let, me just, let me just make this straight. I know we're like, that ain't really happened. I, 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 like, like, like people are like, that ain't really happened. She didn't just turn around and turn into a salt statue. Let me tell you something about our God. Come on. Let me tell you something about our God. If you've been at Bible study with us, our God can, can bend the laws of physics. Yes. Our God can cause water to stand up in walls if he wants to. Our God can cause the sun to stand still while the rest of the planets keep spinning if he wants to. Our God can cause iron to float on top of water if he wants to. You don't have to take my word for it. It's all in the word of God. It's been documented. So if our God wants somebody because they were disobedient and didn't do what he told them to do by not looking back, turn them into a statue of salt, it's more than possible. We serve and worship a physics denying breaking God. Wow. Physics are physics are subject to God. Yes. He is the God of physics. He's the God of biology. He's the God of chemistry. So all that science is under his authority. Yes. Oh, y'all won't get me wound up here. I don't preach without my notes all the time. But anyway, <laughs> but we cannot, I say we, cannot get deliverance looking back. There is a need for the body of Christ to get delivered yes. from church, mm. from rituals, and from tradition, from thinking that we just need to come here, have church, and that's good enough. We need deliverance from that mindset because that is not giving us access to everything that God desires us to have access to. We're not here just to and go home. That's not what we're here for. We're here, we're here, Jesus gave us specific instructions. If we gotta look back at anything, let's look back at the instructions that Jesus gave us. Yes. He, gave, he said, share the good news. Who are you sharing the good news with if you only in the church with people who already know it? Mm -hmm. You're not sharing the good news, you reiterating the same thing that people who already know. You got a whole bunch of churches of amenners and people on the outside who don't know the good news. Right. So they're dealing with the bad news. Mm -hmm. We're supposed to share the good news. We're supposed to feed the hungry, clothe the naked, shelter the homeless. That's what God told us. That's what right. Jesus told us to right. do. Right. That's what Jesus told us to do. And, and, and until we embrace that and stop just having church, guess what? The church is going to be need, in need of deliverance from itself. Mm -hmm. Deliverance from its religion. Yeah. Yeah. Back into the same state that the Pharisees and the Sadducees had fallen into because they were so busy doing the offerings and all that stuff that they forgot about the care of the people. Wow. They forgot to live it. They began to become condescending and judgmental and pride and arrogance and ego got in the way. That's for the body of Christ. But what about for us specifically? Where do you need your deliverance at? Where do you need your deliverance at? Because I know everybody needs deliverance. Amen. No, 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 no. You don't got to amen. I don't need nobody. Because I get phone calls all week long from <laughs> everybody. I have friends and the family, relatives. I ain't even talking about, I'm not talking about the Titans. I'm not, I'm not talking about y'all. Y'all feel guilty, but I'm not talking about y'all. I'm talking about out external, external. I, but I get called. You got a second to, like, 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 you got a second to talk, Steve? My pastor, <laughs> you got a second to talk, Steve, Stevie, A1, ST Fresh, all my little nicknames, Superman, whatever. They call me. So listen, I know that there is a lack of deliverance in the world, but when I listen to the different stories all along, I'm listening to them and there's a whole lot of things that haven't happened. People don't see the signs. And I'm like, yeah, you don't see this? And then, oh no, that's just how they are. Oh, no, no, no. They, they, would, they don't believe the signs. And then when I tell them what you need to do is you need to take a step back and focus on this. They don't want to separate from the signs. So they never even get to the point of looking back. And it's a sad thing when you get them to the point where they're doing well. See, because some people actually do. They see the signs. It's like, hey, man, I believe you. You never led me astray. I'm going to do what you say because you know what? You're wise, Steve. And, 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 a lot, and most of the time when I do what you say, things work out right. And then they start to get a little bit of progress. And they feel a little better. You know, one problem is solved. Then they'd be like, all right, I don't need to listen to any of that stuff you said anymore. And they look back. 
and they look back. There's a passage in the book of Matthew that talks about um, when someone is delivered, when you're delivered, and how the house is swept clean. And it's talking about the body, how the house is swept clean. It's, it's using that as a metaphor. And then there's nothing put back in the house right. to fill it up, so it's just empty. And that's what happens to a lot of us. We get to a point when we when we when we when we get um when we get when we get when we get better when we start feeling like we're doing okay, but we have not filled that mm. that vacancy. Yeah. We yeah. we have not filled that vacancy, and what it says is that that thing that you were delivered from goes through dry places, and then it comes back with seven other things, and they re-inhabit that empty vessel, and the state of that man is worse yeah. than it was originally. And that's the problem because we don't. And when, we, when you see, the thing about the separating part, and and, and 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 not looking back. If you're not looking back, where are you looking? If you're not looking back, where are you looking? You're looking forward. Your eyes are open. If you're not looking behind you, you're looking forward, and that's exactly where your focus needs to be. The Bible tells us, forgetting those things that are behind us, reaching for those things which are before us, I press toward the mark of the higher calling, which is in Christ Jesus. And that's what we have to do. If you're looking forward, then you're going to begin to fill those empty places with hope. That's the one right there. I know y'all thought I was going to go somewhere. With hope. Like, because the the world, how much hope do you see out there? How much hope do you see out there? How much hope is there for the man under the bridge sleeping in a tent? In a tent? How much hope do you think he had? How much hope did the man who was sleeping in front of the church this morning, how much hope do you think he, how much hope does the woman who just got evicted with her three babies have? How much hope does the person who just lost their job in this economy have? How much hope does a person who just got released from prison with the clothes on their back and not a dollar to their name, how much hope do they have? But when you have God, you always have hope. Yeah. One of the things that people who are so that are that are still just dumbfounded by is when they come here that they're like, "You're helping me. Why? <laughs> because you need a seed of hope planted in your life, and we have the fruits of the spirit active here. So we're going to plant that in your life to, so that you understand that you always have hope." when Christ is a part of your plan and when you are in his plan. Hope. When you are not looking back, when you are looking forward, you have vision on things that you didn't have before. So you have to see the signs. You have to believe the signs. You have to flee the signs. And when you start running, don't look back. When you start chasing after God, don't look back. And guess what? You're going to hear it. You're going to hear people try to entice you. You're going to have people try to draw you. Hey, remember the time? I remember when I first started running, when I got serious. Hey, we got a fight party tonight. Nah, I'm okay. Hey, man, we going to the club tonight. Nah, man, I'm okay. I'm not looking back. I'm not looking back. I already been there and done that. I already been there and done that. I'm, I just want to share this last piece, and then I'm done. I was talking to a, um, I was talking to, I was talking to an addict not too long ago. I was talking to an addict not too long ago, and um, I asked them. They had relapsed. And they, they, we had interaction back and forth. I would see them for a couple of months, then they would disappear. Then I would see them, and they would disappear. And I would see them, and they would disappear. And I asked them. I said. Why do you keep going back when you know what the results of it is going to be? You've been through the cycle over and over. Mm -hmm. And he said, because we believe that somehow mm -hmm. it'll work out different. Yeah. And it never does. Mm -hmm. and, 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 and I just, and I, and I just, and I just, I just couldn't reconcile that in my mind. When you know something is going to end badly, when you know something that is going to end badly, why would you mess with it? One of my things in my message, I was going to have the lighter and I was just going to hold it up and light it and have the flame go and ask one of the kids to come touch it. Like, if I had a flame, if I had a lighter right here, would you come touch it, Christiana? Would you come touch it, Deshaun? Why? Why? Come on. Why wouldn't you touch the fire? <laughs> Your mom's mad. Fine. Oh, I know. <laughs> and I have to know. <laughs> Not there. Why wouldn't you touch the fire? Because you will burn if you have fire. Yes, because you will burn. You will burn. That's right. You will burn. 
the You see the sign. Burns. You see the sign. You know the sign. So you avoid the sign. But there are other things that are burning people up. Mm. They. She, she, she said something. When I forget what you. We were talking or something. We we're talking about music, and um, you were like, the song "White Line." Oh, you like the lyrics to White Line are obvious, and it's interesting because I was listening to it yesterday on the way home from work, and I really just I parked the car, I was home, and I said I was listening to the lyrics. The lyrics are blatantly telling you about drugs, about and this song is old. It's nothing new, but it's old, and it's it's talking about coke. No, and it says, so don't do it. And they yell it out in the song. They say, so don't do it. And guess what people did? They saw the signs and they just ignored it. And then they got all the repercussions in that song. Like, I was literally listening to that song. I was like, man, I should, that's, that's the message right there. But that's how everything is. Young people, when your parents are telling you stuff, it's because they see the end results of certain behaviors and activities. Older people, when you have pastors and leaders that are telling you stuff, it's not because we want to kill your joy and not want you to have any fun. We just know that your definition of fun is the same as our definition of fun was. And now on the other side of that, that wasn't fun at all. That wasn't fun at all. It was not, it was not fun at all. Getting locked up for possession? That wasn't fun. Nah, not fun. Not fun at all. Getting get, get, get jumped in the street by um by drug dealers because you're on their turf? Not fun at all. Not fun. Not fun. I think you're living a life, but there's another side of that. Looking out a barrel of a desert eagle because you're throwing parties and everybody, you know, don't necessarily like your popularity? Not fun at all. Not a good moment. But by the grace of God, like those situations didn't lead to my undoing. So when your parent and my mom, and listen, I, I knew my mom taught me all that stuff. I just ignored the signs. I ignored it. I ignored it. Don't, don't, don't ignore the wisdom. Don't ignore the signs. When you see the stuff happening that people have warned you about, run. The Bible says, shut, it says, resist the very appearance of evil. Resist it. Anything that has the inkling to look wrong, bad, not. Oh, we're going to a party. Is there going to be alcohol there? No, I'm not going. <laughs> like, like, the very appearance. Oh, well, I won't have to drink. It don't really matter. You can be around somebody else that was drinking, and you just be implicated because of that. I have learned that. Being at the wrong place at the wrong time, and you be the fall guy. Mm -hmm. That has also happened a lot. So, I want y'all to deliver from whatever it is. And listen, we're always in a state of needing deliverance from something. But until you begin to learn how to be delivered over the little things, you're going to have a very hard time getting your breakthrough for the big things. And there's always a bigger giant because there are things so deep down inside that you have to get deliverance over to get through the layers so that you can really see what's holding you captive. Amen? See the signs, believe the signs, flee the signs. And don't look back if you want to be delivered. Amen? Amen. Amen. All I